Welcome to Spotlight on Frazee. I'm your host, Hank Ludke, and I'm here today with Terry Shannon. How are you doing this morning, Hank? Tremendous, Terry. You know, and we're out here at the site of the old uh, trading post that used to be on the Oxcart Trail. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting place. I spent a whole summer out here with my metal detector just having the time of my life, you know, that, that uh, you know, everybody thinks when you're a metal detector, you're out there looking for coins and money and, and jewelry and that stuff. But actually, the history is just fascinating. It really is. You know, we're standing on the site right here where the old trading post was. Uh, with my metal detectors, I went around. The trading post had burnt down, you know, prior to 1890 because the people moved here in, in 1890 and the post was gone at that time. But with the metal detector, I can see where it was it burnt. So I was able to locate the building here. And then right over there, was another building, and talking to the farmer, he believed that actually that was used to store the oxen or the you know the livestock that came through. But uh, the Red River ox carts, they came through, and they actually came out of everybody thinks we went from uh, Winnipeg to uh, Fargo and from Fargo down to to St. Paul, which was called Pig's Eye in those days. But actually, they left from Fort uh, Pemina, and that's just on across the border. It's on the Minnesota side. And those people were really kind of in competition with the uh, uh, Hudson Bay Company. You know, they wanted to send it. And St. Paul was the uh, more or less the hub of all the trading. You know, and what they were hauling down were mostly buffalo skin, and then bring supplies back. But these ox carts were real interesting. There was uh, when they made these ox carts, there was no metal whatsoever in the ox carts. You know, nails are real expensive. I had mentioned earlier, you know, or uh, before I was talking to you, that actually the old timers, the nails were all hand forged, and if they left a building, a lot of times they would burn it down to get the nails back. You know, they're that valuable. So these ox carts were all wood, and they were tied together with with uh, buffalo uh, hide, and it was wetted down, and as it dried, it tightened up. And the axles were made out of oaks, and when they traveled, they they do about 15 miles a day, and they would. Uh, bring about four or five different axles with it to repair. And what was real interesting is, is that they didn't grease the wheels. If they put grease on the axle on the wheels, the, the dust would get in there and act like sandpaper. So it was really noisy. There's a story about a uh, minister in a small church who was holding a sermon, you know, and all of a sudden they could hear the ox cars coming. And he just stood up and said, well, we'll see you next week. You know, <laughs> the sermon was over. They're very, very noisy, you know. It's yeah. just, uh, but uh, this area here, it's my belief, and when I say belief, I don't have these facts down, and they're not etched in stone, but it started in 1844. Mm -hmm. uh, they had several trading routes, but uh, what happened is, you know, the, the white man was kind of really, uh, you know, killing an awful lot of buffalo. The natives got upset about it, and Lakota Indians, which would be the Sioux tribe, uh, started attacking the uh, ox carts. Uh, the, the wagons and that stuff. And what happened in 1844, there was a group that went through, had trouble getting down to St. Paul, and they had to come back, and they didn't dare go through that route, so they started a new one. And they went up from here to Curl Wing, and then from through here up to Detroit Lakes, which they call Lake 44 at that time, and then on to Pemina. It's a uh, little bit of history right there. Well, yeah, you know, and it, it's nice to be out here and just think about, you know, if we were standing here a uh, hundred and... Uh, 70, 60, 70 years ago, we'd be part of a group of uh, ox cart people come through, and like you say, there just wasn't one cart, you know, there was a whole group of them would go at a time just for protection. Yeah, and, and they, they said they could hear them for miles, you know, and uh, I, I just would give anything if I could have a picture of what this looked like back in those days. Mm -hmm. and it was kind of an interesting story. Right up over here one time, I was out with my metal detector plane, and I uh, found a, a metal rim of a wooden barrel. And the barrel had the wood had rotted, you know. But of course, I get all excited, you know. I figured, well, in the old days, they didn't have banks. They buried their stuff. There's got to be something good down there. And I had just a little hand scoop, so I run up to the farm and I said, "Can I borrow a shovel?" I'm real excited. And I dug down and I find the second rim, you know. And then I find the third. It wasn't a big barrel, you know. And the barrel was laying right on the legs. It was a grave, you know. Oh. You can see the thing, <laughs> you know. And, and apparently there was a washout that exposed that. I covered it up right away and, yeah. and I felt kind of bad about it. But you know, there's history here. I yeah. mean, it, if it could talk to us, it would. Really fun, you know. Well, Terry, I appreciate you being on the program, and with that, we'll be right back for another segment of Spotlight on Frazee. And Terry will start showing us some of the things he found out here at the old trading post. Welcome back to Spotlight on Frazee. I'm your host, Hank Ludke, and we're here with Terry Shannon. 
and we're talking about some of the things that he found when we were uh, when he uh, did some excavating along the Oxcar Trail, and these are some of the finds that he has. Now I look at some of this stuff here, Terry, and you know. Yeah, so yeah, they were on the ox carts. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, they were very ornate. In fact, most of the uh, people that, that drove these ox carts actually had a costume that they wore. It was very important that they did that. And this is uh, out at this trading post. This is some of the things that I dug up. You know, I'm out there looking for coins and artifacts and stuff like that. And it's real interesting. Yeah, the, the, I don't know what the story in the bale is. Maybe it was a dinner bale or something, but it, it's, it, it's kind of neat. You know, the old nut just had to go onto something. And it's all hand forged. If you look at the threads inside, you know, they're not even or anything like that. It's all mm -hmm. hand made. And, you know, picked up a lot of square nails. And it's an interesting story on these square nails. Now, the, uh, uh, these are very valuable. In fact, a lot of the times when the people were moving, they would literally burn their cabin that they were leaving down to recover the nails. Wow. So every one of these nails were, were actually hand. Uh, and you know, forged, mm -hmm. and that's stuff is very valid. The only thing we'll talk about, uh, you know, I think I mentioned earlier that the ox carts, none of them had nails. Or, you know, they, uh, everything was just all, you know, pegged together. Mm -hmm. But these are all, you know, the area out there, you know, that at the trading post, they must have did a tremendous amount of shooting. This is just a fraction of, of the uh, shotgun shells. I have another five-gallon pail of stuff that uh, back home that, mm -hmm. that I found. But there's a lot of interesting shells and stuff like that. That, uh, like these old shotgun shells, pretty tough shape. Mm -hmm. But that shotgun shell is solid metal all the way. There's no paper, you know. And I'm sure that's probably the old black powder mm -hmm. you know, shell and that stuff. And here, the whole bullet somebody must have dropped, and I believe, you know, and I, I might not be correct on this, but my belief is that this is probably from the old Sharps Buffalo gun. Yeah, the old rolling block. Yeah, because they, um, you know, uh, most of their, their cargo was actually buffalo hides going down to uh, uh, Pig's Eye or St. Paul and then coming back. But there's a variety of bullets here. These little ones here, I believe, come from the old Henry repeating rifle. Uh -huh. And that was, I think, made in 1866 is when that first came out. Boy. And there's even a uh, pin fire shell. Uh, this is a, you know, it's a pretty tough shape, but actually the firing pin is on the bullet itself. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just an, an interesting thing. You know, I've, this is the only one I've ever run across, and it was out there at the, at the site. So. Now, you know, and I see there's some spoons here, but there's stuff with, like, uh, there's a tag for something. Okay, on these tags, I have another tag down here. Uh, and it turned out it was a key tag for a motel room in Perm. <laughs> you know, so, you know, some of the stuff that I was able to, oh, here it is, right here. Here it is. Uh, this tag, uh, it's the... Uh, the Merchants. Merchants Hotel, uh, number 10. And here's what's left of the key on it. And, uh, you know, I talked to some old timers, and, and they told me that the Merchants Hotel was in Perm at one mm -hmm. time. So the, mm -hmm. the ox cart, you know, went right through there. So that's kind of interesting. I enjoy talking to these uh, old timers. They got a lot of stories to tell, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I realize that I'm one of them too now. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have some locks here too. Yeah, this one here is amazingly good shape, mm -hmm. you know. And this one, is, I think, is probably pretty much the same. Well, it's a little different, but uh, same lock. But look at the difference. You know, this field where the trading post was, was located, you know, has been farmed now ever since uh, 1890. So I imagine there's fertilizer and stuff like that that went on the field. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's really neat to be able to find things in, in this type of shape, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. The bells, you know, they're, they're real ornate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Terry, we're going to wrap up this segment right now. But we're going to be back next week with Terry on Spotlight on Frazee. And we'll continue talking about the old days around Frazee, a hundred and... 30, 40, 50 years ago, you know, yeah. when things were going on here and the start of the heyday in the Frazee area. With that, we'll catch you next week on Spotlight on Frazee.